Established in 1958, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, aka NASA, is an independent agency of the United States federal government responsible for the civilian space program, as well as aeronautics and space research. They send people to the moon, they send rovers to Mars, and right now, NASA satellites are spinning around our planet at 17,000 miles per hour. And you know they were recording the whole time. In fact, they're recording right now. Can you imagine the amazing stuff they get to see on their journeys? Well, today's your lucky day. NASA captures what no one was supposed to see. Sunburst. The sun is composed of plasma, a gas in which the negative electrons move freely around the positive ions, forming a powerful mix of charged particles. Plasma is not a liquid, it's not a solid, and it's not a gas. It's the fourth state of matter, and the sun being a very hot star behaves like a giant nuclear reactor. And this happens. NASA recorded a massive sunburst officially described as a coronal mass ejection or CME. This is where the sun shoots billions of tons of particles into space at over hundreds of miles per hour, and they captured a burst of superheated gas, called plasma, gushing from the sun. Such eruptions happen frequently and result from the dynamic magnetic field lines that extend into the sun's atmosphere. Each CME event can release a huge amount of energy and send streams of million-degree plasma soaring upward. The ejected material either escapes the sun's gravitational pull and ripples through space or falls back towards the surface, and we get quite a light show. If aimed the right way, these charged particles carried on the solar wind can slam into Earth's upper atmosphere, producing amazing auroras. If those solar storms are strong enough, they could affect the planet's electrical grids or even harm satellites in orbit. Fasten your seatbelts, because it's time for today's sweet topic. File this under things that'll make you say, no way. Some folks are saying that this insanely scary creature has been spotted on Mars. Check out this so-called Martian's muscles. Its tails, the claws, and the jaws. It's quite a package. Clearly, this beast was built for speed. And if any of us had the chance to walk on the surface of Mars, we can promise you this is the last thing we would like to encounter. It has some similarities to the famous xenomorph monsters from the Alien movies. Born in 1979, when the first Ridley Scott-directed film came out. So maybe there is some truth to this kind of extraterrestrial being an apex predator-type creature. Maybe we need to rethink this mission to Mars. What do you think? Let's get the conversation going in the comments below using the hashtag SweetTopic. Pyramid Planet This dwarf planet called Ceres is 590 miles across and was discovered in 1801. It's the closest dwarf planet to the sun and is located in the asteroid belt, making it the only dwarf planet in the inner solar system. It lies less than three times as far as Earth does from the sun, close enough to feel the warmth of the star, allowing ice to melt and reform. In 2015, NASA's Dawn spacecraft slid gently into orbit around Ceres, the largest body in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. It contains one of the many mysteries of it, a gigantic pyramid in among the vast craters and alien spots. Now, NASA has revealed stunning new close-up images of the three-mile-high mountain. They revealed the pyramid is in fact a dome with smooth, steep walls, one of which appears to glow. As dawn circled Ceres at increasingly lower altitudes, the shape of this mysterious feature began to come into focus. NASA offered no suggestion that the towering structure is an offering to some long-lost space emperor or home to our new alien overlords and it's probably just a really tall mountain in a solar system filled with wondrous and strange natural phenomena. But the mission has done nothing but stoke imaginations since the discovery of mysterious bright spots on the surface of the dwarf planet. One small step. This NASA astronaut shows us what it was like for him to get his legs working properly after spending almost 200 days in space to find gravity. In a video, we welcomed back the crew of the recently returned Soyuz MS-09 and NASA astronaut A.J. Drew Fustel, who had just spent six months at his former place of residence, the International Space Station. This is what I looked like walking heel-toe, eyes closed after 197 days on the space station during the field test experiment. He tweeted, I hope the newly returned crew feels a lot better. Arms crossed, he takes three somewhat steady steps before his stepping foot occasionally drifts to the side as he moves forward. 
The astronaut ends the exercise after about 10 steps and he ends up drifting more completely towards his right hand side when a woman with a clipboard calls stop. He had been the commander of the ISS expeditions 55 and 56 returning from orbit. The three-member crew of Soyuz MS-09 had circled the globe 3,152 times, covering 83.3 million miles in their own 197 days in orbit. After spending extended periods of time in space, simple tasks like walking could become extremely difficult. That's gravity for you. <laughs> Untethered On February 7, 1984, Astronaut Bruce McCandles made history performing this spacewalk, with no lifelines tethering him to Space Shuttle Challenger. Can you imagine floating in the vacuum of space with nothing, anchoring you to the spacecraft? Using a manned maneuvering unit, McCandles and astronaut Bob Stewart completed several untethered spacewalks during the mission, both venturing more than 300 feet from the Challenger. Weighing 300 pounds, the manned maneuvering unit was powered by 24 small compressed nitrogen thrusters with two motion-controlled handles on either armrest. Sounds easy, right? Wrong! McCandles was one of the 19 astronauts selected by NASA in 1966. He was a member of the astronaut support crew for the Apollo 14 mission and was a backup pilot for the first crew Skylab mission. He flew as a mission specialist on two space shuttle missions. In 1984, he performed this famous spacewalk. Of his famous spacewalk, he wrote, My wife was at mission control and there was quite a bit of apprehension. I wanted to say something similar to Neil Armstrong when he landed on the moon. So I said, it may have been a small step for Neil, but it's a heck of a big leap for me. It's a big leap for everybody. <laughs> Bears on the moon. In 2019, the Israeli Bereshit spacecraft crash landed on the moon. Along for the ride were thousands of tiny creatures, which scientists now think may have spilled out and littered the lunar surface. In an attempt to document life on Earth, a nonprofit organization sent a library to the moon aboard the craft. The Library of Life included a stack of disks archiving 30 million pages of information about Earth, a copy of the entire English language, Wikipedia, human DNA samples, and a mega payload of thousands of these water bears. They're called tardigrades. These microscopic animals may now be the only alive organisms on the moon. Despite the impact, scientists believe that if anything survived the crash intact, it may well have been these water bears. And they've been shown to survive the harsh conditions of space in the past. These creatures, at first glance, are intimidating. They have podgy faces with folds of flesh. They have eight legs with ferocious claws resembling those of great bears. Their mouth is also a serious weapon with dagger-like teeth that can spear prey. But there's no need to worry. They're one of nature's smallest animals and can only be seen with a microscope. A view from space. An astronaut captured a stunning time-lapse video of the Russian Progress MS-10 cargo spacecraft, also known as Progress 71, on its way to the orbiting complex. About 15 minutes of the Progress launch show up in the time-lapse video posted online. The video clearly shows the flare of a rocket launch, the spacecraft making its way up into space, and the re-entry of the first stage of the rocket. As the spacecraft becomes a bright light in the sky, the Earth spins below. A European astronaut, the commander of Expedition 57, captured the images on the space station, and we got a bird's eye view of the epic launch. Highlights in the 90 second video include city lights and clouds visible on the Earth on the lower left, blue and gold bands of atmospheric air glow running diagonally across the center, and distant stars on the upper right that set behind the Earth. Progress 71 delivered 5,652 pounds of supplies to the space station after making a flawless launch from Kazakhstan where Russia blasts cargo and cosmonauts to the space station. Astronauts who live aboard conduct, among more practical duties, numerous science experiments that expand human knowledge and enable commercial industry in low Earth orbit. <laughs> Zero Gravity Gorilla The International Space Station absolutely does not have an alien problem, but it may have a minor gorilla issue. NASA astronaut Scott Kelly transformed from a regular human into a hairy beast and chased a fellow astronaut down a hallway on the International Space Station. The footage starts off like a short documentary showing a crew member loading a bag from a resupply ship into a laboratory. Then out pops Kelly in an ape suit 
and a floating chase ensues. Kelly's retired astronaut twin brother Mark Kelly pulled some strings at NASA to have the suit sent up into space as part of a care package. Kelly was nearing the end of a year-long stay on the ISS, and he shared a series of eye-catching photos of Earth. He has also tended to plants, watched the Super Bowl from afar, and played ping-pong with water. It can't be all work up in space. You can already hear a certain contingent questioning the decision to ship a gorilla suit to the space station along with more pressing cargo, like experiments and food. But let's keep in mind that astronauts are cooped up in small living quarters, working hard for long days. Letting loose in a gorilla suit in microgravity seems like a great idea. Mars Touchdown NASA has released stunning videos of its Perseverance rover landing on Mars. Perseverance was sent to Mars fastooned with cameras, seven of which were dedicated to recording the landing. Their imagery represents vital feedback for engineers as they look to improve still further the technologies used to put probes on the surface of the red planet. The movies cover the final minute of the hair-raising descent, up to the point where the robot's wheels make contact with the ground. The sequences show a whirl of dust and grit being kicked up as the vehicle is lowered by its rocket backpack to the floor of Jezero Crater. This is the first time we've been able to actually capture an event like this landing of a spacecraft on Mars. All the cameras employed in the descent and landing were off-the-shelf cameras, with next to no modifications. The cameras were positioned to capture key events, from the release of the supersonic parachute through the jettisoning of the entry capsule's heat shield and flight of the sky crane, all the way through to touchdown and the backpack's disposal. It's roughly the final four minutes of the rover's seven-minute descent and is simply jaw-dropping in its clarity and detail. A black hole A black hole is an extremely dense object from which no light can escape. Anything that comes within a black hole's point of no return will be consumed, never to re-emerge. Because of its unimaginably strong gravity, by its very nature, a black hole cannot be seen, but the hot disk of material that encircles it shines bright. Against a bright backdrop, such as this disk, this black hole appears to cast a shadow. This stunning new image shows the shadow of the supermassive black hole in the center of an elliptical galaxy some 55 million light years from Earth. This black hole is 6.5 billion times the mass of the Sun. Catching its shadow involved eight ground-based radio telescopes around the globe, operating together as if it were one telescope. Getting so many different telescopes on the ground and in space to all look toward the same celestial object is a huge undertaking in and of itself. Those who were part of the coordinated observations will be working on dissecting the entire spectrum of light coming from the black hole all the way from low-energy radio waves to high-energy gamma rays. With so much data and other telescopes, scientists may have years of discoveries ahead. There are many remaining questions about black holes that the coordinated NASA observations may help answer. <laughs> Jack-O-Lantern Sun Over the course of human history, the sun has been feared and worshipped, rightfully so. The sun provides a vital ingredient for most of the life on Earth. Without the energy provided through sunlight, vegetation couldn't grow, and without vegetation, animals don't have a source of nourishment. And the sun can be very entertaining. As you can see, active regions on the sun combined to look something like a jack-o'-lantern's face, and the image was captured by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory, which watches the sun at all times from its orbit in space. The active regions in this image appear brighter because those are areas that emit more light and energy. They're markers of an intense and complex set of magnetic fields hovering in the sun's atmosphere, the corona. This image blends together two sets of extreme ultraviolet wavelengths, typically colorized in gold and yellow, to create this particularly Halloween-like appearance. The agency shared the image on social media. The photo was taken by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. The observatory constantly monitors the sun from its orbit in space, but they don't always see stuff like this. A Halloween treat for sure. A huge endeavor. The Space Shuttle Endeavor has hit the road. The black and white winged orbiter, which is the youngest in NASA's now retired fleet, left Los Angeles International Airport atop a self propelled overland transporter in the early morning hours in California. The motion signaled the start of a two day road trip to deliver Endeavor to its new exhibit at the California Science Center. And as you can see, this is no easy feat. 
The Endeavour emerged at 11.25 p.m. from a United Airlines hangar, which served as the space shuttle's temporary shelter since arriving at the airport. The shuttle then exited LAX at 2 a.m., rumbling towards its first rest stop along the 12-mile route to the Science Center. At its full speed of 2 miles an hour, the joystick-controlled blue and yellow transporter slowly but steadily carried the 155,000-pound Endeavour forward. The shuttle's 78-foot wingspan and 58-foot-tall tail required a route that was closed to traffic and cleared of obstacles, including light signals and trees. Rolling west from the airport, Endeavour's route took it to the parking lot of a shopping center where it rested for about nine hours. Although not a publicized viewing area for the public, local police were advised that thousands of people may turn up to see Endeavour waiting for its next move. And why not? You don't see that every day. Space Butterfly Thousands of light years away, there's a space butterfly colored with brilliant blues and clouds of purple and red. It's an image we've never seen in this much detail before. So named for its resemblance to the winged insect, the butterfly is actually a planetary nebula, a giant cloud of gas that forms around an ancient star that hasn't yet exploded. It's known as NGC 2899, NGC stands for New General Catalog, which lists nebulae and other astral bodies like this one. It's located somewhere between 3,000 and 6,500 years away from Earth in this constellation Vela, which is visible in the southern hemisphere. This planetary nebula isn't long for this universe. Ultraviolet radiation lights up the shells of gas surrounding the star and causes them to shine quite brightly, but only for a few thousand years before they break up. That's a relatively short lifespan in astronomy. The European Space Observatory's aptly named Very Large Telescope recently captured the vibrant image of the interstellar object. The telescope that captured the image is the world's most advanced optical instrument, according to the ESO. And on its own, the telescope tucked in the Chilean mountains can see things more than 4 billion times fainter than what the human eye could see. Mysterious Moon Music NASA has made public a recording of strange music that astronauts reported hearing in 1969 while on the far side of the moon, out of radio contact with the Earth. Apollo 10 launched in May of 1969. The Apollo 10 astronauts flew to the moon in a command module, and two of the crew members also took a ride in the lunar module dropping down to less than 10 miles above the moon's surface. The noises reportedly were heard by the astronauts as they circled the moon. The three astronauts on board were Thomas Stafford, John Young, and Eugene Kernan. The sounds, which lasted about an hour, were recorded and transmitted to Mission Control in Houston. You hear that? That whistling sound? Asks Kernan, describing it as an outer space type music. The trio felt the sounds were so strange that they debated whether or not to tell the chiefs at NASA for fear that they wouldn't be taken seriously and could be dropped from future space missions. But of course, the mysterious moon music was recorded and reported. However, NASA says the sounds could not have been alien music. The whistling sound, as it turns out, was nothing more than interference between the VHF radios and the two different vehicles. Space Salad Recently, NASA harvested its first ever space radishes. The small crop was grown for experimental purposes, so sadly don't expect space salads to be served to the general public anytime soon. But hey, we're heading in the right direction. According to a NASA fact sheet, 11 experiments have been completed growing veggies for human consumption as part of a program from red romaine lettuce in 2015 to Mizuna mustard. American astronaut Kate Rubens plucked 20 radish plants from the Advanced Plant Habitat on the International Space Station, wrapping them in foil and placing them in cold storage until it's time for their return trip home. Radishes are a different kind of crop compared to leafy greens that astronauts previously grew on the space station, or dwarf wheat, which was the first crop grown here. But growing a range of crops helps them determine which plants thrive in microgravity and offers the best variety and nutritional balance for astronauts on long-duration missions. The hope is that these experiments will help NASA on its aspirations to have sustainable exploration of the moon by the end of the decade, and then further reaches of space from there. Space Shampoo In space, washing your hair can be a hair-raising adventure. This video of zero-gravity hair washing was recorded by American astronaut Karen Nyberg, one of six space travelers now living on the International Space Station, the latest astronaut video to show what it's like to live in space. I've had a lot of people ask me how I wash my hair in space, and I thought I'd show you how I do it. 
Nyberg explained in the video as her locks floated around her. There are some must-have tools she relies on to wash her hair, a small pouch of warm water, a bottle of no-rinse shampoo, a towel, and a comb. On Earth, washing your hair is a simple act of standing under a shower and lathering shampoo. But there is no shower on the space station, and even if there were, the water wouldn't fall down, as you can see. It would spray everywhere in weightless blobs. She's careful to keep her hair in a manageable position, combing it out above her head until it looks like a dew that defies gravity on Earth. Then it's time for shampoo, which Nyberg adds to her hair just like the water, from the scalp up. Then it's time to dry. As the water evaporates, it will become humidity in the air and the air conditioning system will collect that. It won't be long and the water processing system will turn it into drinking water. Pretty cool, huh? So, did we take you far enough into the farthest reaches of our universe? Clearly, NASA is the perfect place to achieve this. And we're glad they let us in on these discoveries. So like and subscribe for more great videos.